Hi everyone, it's Kim. I finished my first junk journal last night. May have a little tweaking here and there to go, but I'm really excited because this is the first one. I had so much fun. It's I love being creative. I've had some wonderful people that I've met online and who sent me some beautiful things. I received some napkins last night from Corey. If you're watching, thank you so much. Um, I, I'm just having the best time. But I'll start right here. The first thing, last thing I made, well, second to last, I made a little, um, just a little dangle for the side of my book. So when I put it on the shelf, I'll know which one it is. And it was basically, I had a little charm bracelet that broke, and it had some cute little heart charms. This is an old broken necklace that I picked up at the thrift store. I got a little bag of stuff for, you know, like 10 cents. So I used some of the beads from it. And I have some of my homemade paper beads on it, as well as some more from that charm bracelet. And it's just held on here with a little sewing clip. You, but, you know, when you're a quilter, you get these little clips all the time. And I have a bunch of them, so I just figured, tie the little thing on top, clip it on. I can remove it if I need to. And you may have seen this before. This is my, um, again, homemade beads, a bunch of salvages off of fabric. And it's a part of a broken fan. And I think I showed everybody how to make that. And that's going to stay in this book as well. It's just a bookmark so I know where I'm at. I did have a page mark. Now I forgot. Huh? I used some vintage brick rack that I found at the thrift store. I think I paid a nickel for it. And I just kind of thought I really liked the way it, you know, shined against my book. And I was gifted this button here. I liked the way it went on because it has kind of like a little cotter pin on it which I thought was really cool. This little thing here I just had to punch a hole and slip that cotter pin and I like the look of the cotter pin on that side so I really like that and this is a homemade library pocket with a card and a couple little homemade tickets that I made with just a paper punch plain old-fashioned you know make a hole punch the first page here has a pocket with a little flip down and inside, whoops, forgot to take my paper clip off. Inside I have a little card and on the back, I think I mentioned before, I found a children's dictionary and throughout the book I figured it's just a fun little thing to look for all these words that I put in there. There's an A to Z, a couple of them are repeated. But I found some words that I liked, and I just thought it would be fun to have, you know, if my grandkids flip through it, they could look for the words. And this is, says magical, and then what that means. So, oop, I wanted to make it kind of a little more fun. I'm not huge into journaling. I do journal some, but this way, it's just kind of fun to have a little something to look for as you go along. And then I have a booklet that I made with my homemade puzzle closure. I just love these puzzle closures. It's just an old puzzle. I do have a video on how I made one of these booklets. This one in particular has another word inside. It has place to journal and then it has just a little extra tuck here. So that's that. And before I had the puzzle closure on it, I made this cute little paper clip just for a little extra embellishment. So that slides here in a tuck spot on the side of the book. The next one is just some really cute little um, tags that I printed out free online. And this is a simple fold I learned at the Paper Outpost. It's just like three folds. The only thing, I'm not sure if it's the paper I use, but they kind of slide out easy. So I, I'm not going to use them a lot. I do like the tucks a lot, but maybe I'm going to try a different kind of paper. This is out of a seed catalog. Um, but my tags tend to slide out. This was one of my favorite little tucks. I took a um, picture from a magazine that I really liked, and I made it so that if you pull it out, you could put it back together into the picture that was on there. So I thought that was kind of neat. And there's spaces to journal on the back of these cards. This one's glued on, but not these. And that has another journal spot. 
And this is a little waterfall page I made because I like the colors, and that has a journal spot. Or you could put photos on the back, whichever. Um, but that was, I, th I thought that was really fun to do that one. Another little book page tuck here, another word, a couple tags that I made that I printed out online. Um, this was just to add a little something of interest to the back of that. And a paper flower that I made. It was a little bit more 3D, but when I kind of closed the book down, I flattened it, but that's okay. It's just some book pages again, using up some book pages. We like to, I like to cut them out of the books, but then when you do it the extra pages, you find a way to use them. And this spot here has my little kitty cat looking over. That's, that's all the fabric had on it. This is a little fabric kitty, and he's looking over at the goose flying and the little bird on the ground there. And another tag with a hidden word on the back. This is just a simple two-fold. And my hidden paper clip. You can't see it on either side. And it also will not snag if you happen to have lace or something on the page. It won't snag. Then I just have a couple little bags that I made. I made quite a few bags. And one of my favorite elements is the little dangle tag. I just love these little dangles. It's a tea bag tag that I covered. There's a paper clip, and I have a, a video on that as well, how I made these. And another tuck with a journal spot, but it also says laugh. So I'm hoping that, you know, if you get a little inspiration word, maybe you can put down a memory of something that made you laugh. <clears throat> Excuse me. A couple more little envelopes. This one flips down, has a word radiant. And this one has a little card inside. Oh, if I can get it out. Sometimes they're not so easy to get out. And this word I had on there prior to doing my dictionary, so I still have loving. That's another L word. But I don't have the uh, dictionary version of it. This is just a little side tuck I made. And this had the word humor on it. These are words that mean something to me in a way. And a little pull-out booklet here. Another tiny little paper clip to hold it shut. I just covered the front of a paper clip with a little card. Put a couple little stickers on there. And it gives me another little journal card. So it gives me like a nice little booklet to journal on. And I put the lace on there because if not, it's hard to get out of the pocket. So I thought that was a a nice way to be able to hide it in my pocket but still reach it so I can get it out without having to dig through. This I also learned at the Paper Outpost. She made a little fan out of book pages and it was the perfect spot for me to put my little cards that I made. These are known as tea cards and they used to be very collectible and I made I went crazy making them because I just loved them to death. And I made tons and tons of them, and this gives me a spot to put a bunch of my little tea cards. So I can, you know, once again, if I like to have my grandkids or somebody flip through the book, they'll see something interesting when they pull them all out. And I'll put these all back after I'm done. Just another little tuck spot. Here's a journal page using a homemade stamp that I found over at L. John. A lot of this book is inspired from her as well. She um, glued down string, so you have a little place to write. These strings are a little big, but that's okay. I don't mind at all. And a little, another little tag. This little jewel is a broken, I don't think it was a necklace or something. There's a whole bunch of them kind of stuck together. I just wanted to add a little bling to it because I love bling. This is inspired that, that one threefold again. Some of my uh, little tea cards that I made. Like I said, I made tons of them. And like I said, this one, it doesn't hold them very well, but that's okay. They're holding well enough. Another, I sewed around some of these. And this is a crossword puzzle. It's something easy to use. It could add a little interest. Um, if you want, you could put a little journal spot on the back. But it makes a cute little bookmark tuck here. And to cover up the staple I put up here, I put a couple little jewels on it. 
Here's another one of those pieces of the necklace that was broken and one of my homemade tassels, paper tassels. Again, I made a video on that. I could take this. This is in a, in a, oh, here down there. Must have had something stuck to the back of that. Must have glued it from the other side. It's just a little stitched um, card that I made just to have some interest in honor of my granddaughter who loves flamingos. I had to put some in the book. Put my little jewel back here. And that kind of just winds on there like that. And I put my little tassel back. I like my tassels. Oh, that's what was on the back of here. Somehow one of my tea cards got glued down to the back. Must not have been dry all the way when I put it on there. So let's see. I just kind of twisted that on like so. Tucked my tea card on the other side. So I had another spot for that. Just another little tuck spot. I don't have anything in there yet. I'll probably make something with a little piece of lace sticking out so that I can, you know, reach it easier. This is a super simple little tuck belly band. It's just a piece of lace. I saw something similar to that, I believe, on Al John. And a travel card with some journaling spots. And, of course, it says explore on here. And I'm hoping that, you know, I could kind of teach the kids to look up the words. More journaling places. Another um, homemade paper tassel. And inside, again, with the lace at the top so I could pull it out, a journaling card. I used a stencil to draw the lines that um, I found in a box of old Creative Memories stuff. And it makes a nice way to draw some cute lines. It adds a little interest through the bag, I think, because it added color and you could kind of see the wavy lines back there. I, this was from a, I believe, a Audubon, maybe, sent me something. Anyway, of course, there's always the clusters with the clothespin. And I put the word inspire on that. I use that to hold my, my favorite bird in the planet as a cardinal. And I don't know what I want to do on the back. I could journal. I could put a journaling spot. But I just love having the cardinal in my book. And if I remove it, I still have a pretty little one that I cut out or tore, I should say, out of a book. And this, I like putting my little tassels on the back side so it adds some interest to the paper clip on the back. Well, I'll tuck that later. All right, then I have, this is some fabric that I found. I just glued it with watered down glue water, as Amy over at Al John calls it. And it stuck very well to the back of the cereal box. I just cut them out and put them on here. Tiny little tuck spot once again with a little paisley there just for, you know, a little interest because this was a challenge over at the paper outpost. It was to make three things using an envelope. So I did the corner tuck and I made a tiny little tag. Of course, it says smile on it. And then I used the envelope itself and I made a little envelope here. But for that, I put another card in there. Of course, I had to repeat the word smile. And it gives another journaling space. Again, that came from that stencil that I found. The next page has another one of my puzzle closures. This was the first one that I did. Gives me a journal space, a couple of pages here. And again, this is one of my favorite closures ever. These are just a couple little punch outs that I found put on with a staple. And it, what Amy does is she calls these, I hmm, can't remember, they're like mid-book dangles or something. Anyway, you can color these staples with uh, Sharpies. I did that in gold. I wish I had done another color, but I like to use them throughout. And it's just a little journaling spot. <clears throat> Some more of my little tea cards. And they were getting caught on this, so I just put this very thin little layer of tool with the bling on it, and I think it added a little interest on top of my tea cards. A little waterfall page. This happens to be the off cuts from the one where you put the, the picture back together, and I have a word hidden in there. Some more of my tea cards. This was an envelope. I just sewed across, cut it out to fit in my journal, and it holds some more of my little tea cards. 
just another little tuck spot. This was from a quilting magazine. I'm a quilter. I adhered it to some chipboard so I could put in some of my tags. And this one has some vintage thread wound on it. Another one of my favorite little dangles with the tea bag and of course a card. This one likes to get stuck in there. I made it fit too well in there. Oop, there it goes. And this is just a, a torn out of a catalog, seed catalog, some paper on the back, and of course another journal spot. The bags I made, <clears throat> excuse me, the bags I made have, um, this one expands if I wanted to put a bunch more things in there. And I, it works well to put it in, but to get it out, the card's just a hair too big. So I may trim that down a little bit. This was one called One Page. Well, of course, partway through my battery went dead. So let me finish this up. I made this page here. It has the little sunflowers that I really like. I think I showed part of this before the battery went dead. And, oops, pulling on the wrong spot doesn't help. Just has a couple little journal cards in it. Fussy cut butterflies. And this was a one-page wonders, it was called, and it wouldn't fit on this page, so I ended up having to cut it in half anyway. The next page has a couple little altered cards that I made, and I received a beautiful gift from Patricia. She sent me some things, and I made this out of a 6x6 six six pack that she sent me with these beautiful papers and I did the very best I could to not waste a single piece of it. There was a tiny, tiny little corner like this big that I stamped these three little hearts out of or cut them out from a punch that she sent me and that was the only waste on the entire thing. The other half of this is later in the book that shows how I used up the rest of the papers that went in this um, little pocket here. So I made two pockets and a little extra to go with it. This is just a card. I left it blank. I thought it would be a perfect place to put a photo on the back. Another little paper clip with just some, you know, um, this is string that I fuzzed out on the side. This was a challenge over at the paper outpost. We were to use three little circles. This came out of a art catalog. They were selling actual artwork and I cut these three little pictures out, put on a little ribbon so I can make a dangle out of it. This is just a plain um, journal card on the back. Um, it's hard for me to slide this on and off without my little girls falling off, so I'm not going to not gonna knock them down today. Um, I enjoyed doing this. was my first, I think my first and only flip out. I hadn't done any up to this point. And this was a Christmas envelope. I did not like that this was plain white, so I just sponged some blue in here, did a fussy cut bird, fussy cut flowers, covered up poor little Santa Claus reading to the children in the corner, but doesn't fit this theme, and I have more. That flips out to another journal spot here, where I have another card to journal, another one of my hidden um, paper clips up here, so you don't see it on either side, just some more little cards. I could put journal cards on the back, or... You know, they're just fun and pretty to look at. This is um, another little bag that I made that expands a little bit. And I thought it was kind of plain, so I did some stamping on it. A nice little cute notebook that I made. Again, another journal spot. And just a little paper clip that I covered to keep it shut. This is one of my favorite little paper clips again and there is a tutorial on this. It shows that um, there's no paper clip showing and it's also made in such a way that if you have lace or something on your page it won't grab that on, on the clip underneath. The clips are completely covered so that it won't grab on anything underneath. And they're pretty easy to use. You know, they just have to slip back on the edge of your paper. I made these specific to stick up above the book they can be made so that the clip is up here and you don't see them, but I really like to see them above the book. Kind of if you have a special page you want to mark. This is a pen. It actually writes, and it's a way I can keep it in my journal. I raise chickens, ducks, and turkeys, and I just thought that was kind of in their honor that I made it into a feather. So I have a little feather pen that I can write in in my journal, and it's always in there, and it does not add hardly any bulk to it. And just another little envelope I made. 
like I keep saying, I like to have my grandkids look through it, and they can just find fun little things to see inside. I may, you know, have them, I might even give them one of those little journals that come out separate, and they can, you know, play in it and write in it themselves. This was in that children's dictionary. Um, it's, it was the pine tree, and I just glued it on here, and this came out of a, a Audubon, sent me a certificate that had my name on it for buying trees from them. No, that was Arbor Day, sorry, Arbor Day Society. And I just glued some paper on here, sewed around on my sewing machine, and I put one of my words on the back, one of my dictionary words. This was actually a little tear in my page. What do you do about it? You cover it up with a little piece of ribbon. One of my favorite, favorite pages in the whole book has a couple of my little words underneath. This one says giggle. I thought it was very appropriate for this. And that one says quack. What do you do for Q, right? Horton, here's a who. Again, I love Dr. Zeus. And this was one of my favorite little cards. And the Horton says, I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends and my small speck of dust. And clover by clover by clover with care, he picked up and searched them and called, Are you there? And it has three different kinds of clover that I took out of a seed catalog. So that tucks in there. And this is, I love dandelions. You know, I know a lot of people hate them in their lawns. I think they're beautiful. They're one of my favorite flowers, to believe it or not. I love seeing, like, I live on three acres, and just to see an acre of all those beautiful yellow flowers, it's just amazing. But anyway, some dandelions. This is just another little, it's a double tuck. You can tuck here. You could tuck here. Well, it's a triple, actually. You could tuck under here, or you could do a side pocket. And just one of the cards I printed out free online. And this has a little tag that I added some of that sparkle tool to it. And it has my X word on it. It's Xiphius. Xiphius is a swordfish, by the way, just so you know now. These are made out of fabric, so you could add fabric to your journals. It has another one of the words on it, wink. You know, I try to add fun words to it. This here was a Christmas card envelope. It was red on the outside and gold on the inside. And I cut it into strips and wove it together with some music book pages. And I, I just think it's really cool. I have not put a journal spot on the back. I was thinking maybe a photo on the back would be really cool. My granddaughter's a musician, my oldest one, and I, I might add a picture of her with her trombone on there. I thought that would be most appropriate for that. This is just some ripped book pages that I put back in here again with the music for my granddaughter. Here's the other half of that paper that um, Patricia sent me. Another just a tucked in journal spot. What I did with this was these, this is the off cuts that I used up here. I just happened to take one and instead of doing it that way, I flipped it upside down. So I used this is this, this one from up here. And then this is the side from the other large one that corresponds with it. And this is just the little corner up here. And then I punched out the hearts. And this is the other corner that corresponds to this one here. It actually kind of went this way a little bit. And that's where I punched those three little hearts out. And that, that little piece that was left right here with the hearts cut out was all I had left that wasted. That was waste from this whole project here. And I'm doing, I think I'm going to work really, really work hard on a no waste journal. I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, that's going to be one of my, you know, I'm going to start a couple at the same time on my next one. This is, again, that one that I folded that tends to slip out. And I think it's, I really think it's the pages that I used. I don't know. They're, they're just slick or something. I received some beautiful napkins from Corey. If you're watching this, thank you so very much. I appreciate your gift. I just got these in the mail yesterday. And I haven't even had time to um, say thank you. I started working with them right away. And this is one of the tags that I made. And I have a whole bunch put away for my next journal that I'm starting. Just some other ones I printed out online. As a matter of fact, I had printed 
a bunch of these out and that happens to be what's under this beautiful napkin so changed from something kind of plain to this beautiful tag here then I have another one of my puzzle um, closures and I do have a tutorial I have not put it up yet um, my internet we've been having a lot of problems with our internet um, provider up here I live in a very rural area we only have one internet service it's wireless and they had some problems with their tower so by the time I load this video it's going to take five or six hours to load it but anyway this is um, another one of my puzzle closures and in here I just have a simple journal card but I will be putting this tutorial up unfortunately it's about an hour long and it shows how I learned my first um, envelope how to make with the accordions on the side this was from an atlas that I received for free I really love atlas I, I love maps anyway so this is just another little pocket that I made a bag and it has a cute little um, tag in it I just sat down one night and made a bunch of clusters and when I was kind of bored one night I made clusters and then I put them on some card and then I sewed around the cards put my cluster on and this was again from the dictionary it wasn't any specific word it was just I happened to cut it out of the dictionary and make this before I decided to do all the cute little kind of search me out words that just tucks in here these are some of my homemade bling dots <laughs> actually when I realized my camera had gone dead I just realized I had not used them in my book so these are freshly glued on you can still see the glue is drying I just use some um, tacky glue and I wanted to put some more bling on my pages as you can see they hopefully you could see they sparkle really pretty and I do have a tutorial on how I made these um, homemade bling dots as well they're super easy they're made out of hot glue and I have different methods on how to color them this is some brads that I colored this is eye makeup that I put uh, crushed up and put into um, Elmer's glue and it makes a really pretty little shimmer paint it's on some of the other pages you just don't see it as well as I do so I wanted to show you on I'm hoping you could see that it's got some nice shimmer to it this is a brad with just um, fingernail polish the glitter polish that I put on there and one of my homemade beads this opens up to reveal um, just a simple journaling card can't have a you know I might add different tucks in it later depending on you know when I have the grandkids look through it if they think it's fun or not one of my favorite little dangles like I mentioned there is a tutorial on this I love these dangles I just think they're the cutest things one of these days when I get some money I want to buy myself a couple at least one circle punch if I could punch the center out I need one at least that size and then I can hand cut this outside out so I'm saving my money I want to buy me a circle punch there's two items I realized I really really need and that's where I'm going to focus my savings on one is I would love to have a circle punch and two a scoreboard I can do it with a ruler I just don't think it's as accurate as I can get with a scoreboard so I'm saving my pennies for those things hopefully um, I did get one gift card for my birthday from Amazon and I'll save that towards um, the scoreboard first just a little tuck a tag once again and um, says keepsake on the back this is just a junk mail envelope I got in the mail uh, this covers up the writing on the the junk mail here there was some uh, that code whatever there and I just put a piece of fabric here in a little fan and um, I found a stencil at the Dollar Tree that happened to have a key on it and I just like keys in general so I stamped that little key on there or you know through the stencil this is just a simple card it's blank on the inside um, it's not really I used a, a key tag that had no keys on it to hold paper there but I figured if Oh, I realized I have to re-glue this down if I wanted to um, use this as a sympathy card or send it to somebody I could easily take these papers out and put a nice little make a nice little card out of it um, I thought it was really pretty birthday card or a sympathy card and 
I have some altered playing cards. I do have a video on this. I received some beautiful napkins from Michelle. Thank you once again, Michelle. I appreciate them very much. And I made this beautiful um, card from one of the napkins she sent me. And it's a Scrabble card from a playing a kid's game. And I just, it's just gorgeous. What can I say? I mean, if I do say so myself, I love this card. I just like the way it comes through and shows on that beautiful napkin. And it would not have been possible without that napkin. And just a couple simple more altered playing cards. Um, again, this is a napkin from that Michelle sent me. And one of the clusters that I made when I was sitting down that one night. And the last pages I have here, just three little pockets that I made. Three little bags. They each have a, tuck, um, a tag or something in them. They're just simple little spots to put a different direction, I guess. One of my homemade tassels. You can see it's getting kind of beat up there, but it's still pretty. That was just cut from a... Uh, it was a book or a magazine, I don't remember, and I just thought it was so pretty. I had to use it somewhere, and I put my U word on the back, unique. Some little tickets, just simple. I'm good. I think I'm just going to put a couple little stickers on these and call them done. Um, I was just practicing how much of the paper punch I needed to use to get the proper size hole. It's just that's all I have is plain old paper punch. And when you fold them, you just take off the very little nip of the corner. And I made some homemade tickets. My next venture, I'm planning on sitting down with some, all those beautiful napkins, and I want to make a bunch of homemade stamps. And I received this ATC in the mail, oh, probably 20 years ago when I was doing a lot of scrapbooking. And I always saved it because it was so pretty. And I made it a focal point on the very back of my book. And then I simply have the back page. The entire book itself, the cover, was just a priority mailbox that I received in the mail. And I cut it to size, and I collaged over top of it. And that was the very start of my journal. So there you have it, my very first journal. And I can't wait to get started on my next one. I'm going to be using a tutorial from um, Nick the Books Bookmaker. I can't remember if it's Nick the Bookmaker or Booksmith. NIK and Amy over at L. John. I want to make a lap book for my next one, and that's going to be more collectibles than journaling. And so I want to get that one started next because I have a new grandbaby coming, and I want to make one for the new grandbaby so that they could put things like photos and the little armband and things like that, their sonogram pictures and things like that. So I need to get that one started, and um, I wanted to thank. A couple of websites that really helped me out on this journal. Now, this does not go against the ones that I watch in my other videos, and I'm going to do a shout-out to them as well. But first, my very first one I want to thank is Amy over at L. John. She has a series out, two, a couple different series, on how to do this on a budget. If I had not found her videos, I would not know that it was possible to do some of this on very little money. I've spent well under $30 on everything I own to make these. I did find quite a few things in my stash. I just literally went through junk drawers and boxes and dug up the weirdest things just so I had some beautiful things to work with. And, you know, I found a little bit of this and a little bit of that, paper punches and things like that. But thank you so much, Amy, for your series. You gave me belief that this could be done on a budget. I also want to point out Junk Journal Ideas. They have a fabulous Facebook group, some of the nicest ladies out there, and she has some beautiful tutorials on how to make the book itself. Absolutely, your first junk journal, if you're going to make one, go look up Junk Journal Ideas and her, I think it's a six-part series, step-by-step -step on how to make the book itself. Um, the Paper Outpost, I've mentioned you, I've used a lot of your ideas. Thank you very much for your tutorials. Um, I also watch Treasured Books and Shabby Dabby Duda and, oh, I, I'm sorry, ladies, I can't remember you all, Jer Gia Kerr and, oh, I, I know I'm forgetting a few, but I love all of you and thank you all so much for your tutorials because they made me believe this is possible to do on hardly no budget at all. So thank you, thank you for 
sticking through this rather long video. I was hoping it wouldn't be that long, but it was. And um, if you have not seen it yet, until February 9th, 2020, I have a subscriber giveaway. Go look for that video. Um, I'll try to link it below because I'm giving away one of two prizes, and it's your choice which one you want. So if you're into junk journaling, I have a prize, or if you're into my budgeting videos, I have a separate one, and it will be your choice which one you want, and it is open worldwide. I have uh, an alternative for that, so please go look for that. Subscribe if you're not. Um, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you like about my videos and what you don't, and most of all, Go make something pretty today.